Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick, G Parts and Team G503. We're gonna do a series of. What are you doing? <laughs> Funny guy here, my son Scott Schiller, the second. <laughs> two. Yeah, two. He's been giving me a hand, and uh, we're gonna. This is the second. No, this is not the second part. This is the third part of the wiring series. We've been doing a wiring series on the electrical. Looking forward to making all these videos. It's a little difficult to film this stuff, I gotta say, but we've got some neat stuff for you to see. This video is solely about the switch, the headlight switch, the master switch that's on that firewall. It's a lot of fun. Once you get past this and get those wires through the firewall, it's kind of like the big first hurdle you got to kind of cross over there. At least it was for us, right? I mean, a little you bit. did a great job. Yeah, yeah. Follow that schematic from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts in the, in the catalog there. That's going to be super helpful for you. All right, let's roll. I will be using a switch assembly, part number A135, that does not come with a circuit breaker. So I'll be adding this circuit breaker, part number A1349, to the system. As you see, this circuit breaker has a side that will allow for a battery side where the power will enter the switch, and also an accessory side. It is installed as shown here with the actual unit of the circuit breaker facing down towards the back side of the switch. Install the two lock washers and screws on the top and make sure you secure them tightly as you want this connection to be as tight as it possibly can. The circuit breaker will protect your system in case of any sort of surge and you won't destroy or ruin any of the components. There is an old saying in automobile electric, it goes clean, bright, and tight. Clean meaning being void of any debris or grease, bright making sure your contacts are shiny so the metal connects with each other correctly, and tight making sure your fasteners are tight. As we wire this up, let's keep those three things in mind. On pages 39 and 40 of the Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts Catalog, there are very detailed and easy to follow wiring diagrams for both the early standard and later wiring that would have been with the rotary switch. Also, in each individual component in the Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts harnesses, it also comes with an individual piece of paper for that specific wire or wiring component. I will be using A9220, the long body wiring harness in this video. The end that we're going to be starting with here is the one with the multicolored wires. You see it's all wrapped up and that will go all the way back to the tail of the Jeep. Before I do that though, I want to just show you the post here, how they're labeled with letters that coincide with each post. That'll come into play as we install all the different wires. The location for the long harness will be the second hole in from the driver's side. And we'll just use this tool or screwdriver to go through and punch through that firewall pad. It'll be a little tough if you try to do it with just the wires. This will just make it easier. And then here's the end that I was explaining earlier with the multicolored, all the different multicolored wires. You'll notice a difference on the other end. There's only a few, and they'll just be connections. I'm going to feed one wire at a time through that grommet. It makes it easier, starting with the longest one first and then working to the shorter ones. We're going to feed these wires all through that grommet and then we're going to push them so they come outside of the dashboard that will make it really easy for us to go ahead and wire up the switch before it is installed. If you installed the switch first there's not much room underneath that cowl to work on and it'll just be really easy for us to connect all these in order and then also you can keep them straight up and down so it'll fit really nicely and be neat under the cowl after we get done. Once we get to the end here where the black tape starts, push yourself in about a foot. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hang the rest of this harness on my oil cam bracket. It'll keep it out of the way and keep it nice and neat. When we go around here to the inside of the tub, I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. You see how these wires are protruding out of the bottom of the dash by about a foot or so? Okay, that's what's going to make it really easy. The first wire we're going to start with is going to be the red wire with the two black tracers. As you can see there, it's got the two, I'll call them black dots to make it easy to see. And we're going to connect those to the SS post on the actual switch itself. This circuit is for the trailer socket. While Scott is continuing to tighten those down, and you notice he's keeping them at a 90 degree angle to the switch, we'll zoom in a little close here and I'm going to show you the actual fasteners that are on the switch. It's a simple round headed screw, as I'm showing here, and this is a special star washer. You see that little leg that's on the back there? That goes into the hole that's directly underneath the screw terminal on the switch. These are the common connections on each end of the wire. You notice it favors one side so it's not perfectly split in the center and that's what you're going to want to connect to your post. You don't want to turn it the opposite way as a screw won't tighten correctly. The next circuit we'll be installing is the red with two white tracers. It is connected to the S terminal on the switch and this is for the driver's side taillight. 
I'll get the washer and the screw here lined up and ready to go. And this is a little difficult part. You really got to ha kind of have nimble fingers here. But I'm going to show you close exactly where that little post leg I was speaking of goes. Again, the star washer goes on the outside of the connecting terminal on your wire. And once you got that on, just go ahead and hold it at a 90 degree angle. I'll say that again. I like to keep them all neat because when you put that underneath the dash, that's going to help and it's going to keep everything in order. We'll go ahead and tighten that down. The next circuit we're going to be attaching is the white with two black tracers and that would be the passenger side tail light and it is attached to the BS connection. The TT connection will attach the green with two black tracers. This is also part of the trailer light socket and then we'll be attaching the yellow with two black tracers to the BHT circuit on the switch as shown here. Now some of these terminals will have multiple wires placed on them and I just showed you the first ones in the series so you would not misplace them. The next part I'm going to be installing is the part number A6154, the body wiring harness left side short. And that is going to be attached to terminal BHT also. Attach the connection with the black short lead and the yellow longer lead to the BHT terminal and then tighten it down and snug it up a little bit and I'm going to turn this at a, about a 15 degree angle to the 90 degree angle that we did the original yellow and black wire and then we're going to go ahead and make sure that connection is very tight. On the body wiring harness left side short, disconnect the SS terminal and attach the red and with two white tracers to the SS so you have both of those attached to the SS stud. Attach the green with two black tracers to the SW terminal towards the front side of the switch. These are part of the stop switch circuit. Next, on the HT mark side, as you see here we've turned the switch over because that's inverted to the opposite where it's marked. We'll attach both the blue with three white tracers and the single three white tracers together as shown here. Both of those leads or terminals are connected to the HT terminal. These are part of the illumination lamps for the instruments as well as the headlights. On the loose end of the body wiring harness short left side, notice there's the three wires here that come out the end. They're green, red, and yellow. We're going to feed those through the grommet, through the firewall, and come out the outside of this grommet here, the smaller one that's towards the furthest side of the driver's side of the tub. Use a screwdriver again to punch through the firewall pad as it will make it easier for you to put the wires through. I like to feed the wires through one terminal at a time. It seems to make it easier as opposed to trying to force the whole wiring harness through, especially this small grommet. Once you get all three leads through, you can pull out the end and you'll see here it's taped all together and that makes it really nice and easy for it to come through the grommet. These will be fastened to the junction block at some point, but that's a little bit further down in our wiring process. Once those leads are all complete and you've got that pulled through the firewall, I'll now install the actual switch itself into the dashboard. On the knob there is a set screw. This one's already loose. If it's not loose, you have to undo it with the slotted screwdriver before you can unthread it as shown here. Once that's unthreaded, we have to loosen up this bolt here on the bottom with a lock washer and that cap will pop right off. The next step is to go ahead and remove the machined piece here. It's got lips in it so the actual cap can clip into that with the set screws. So we'll go ahead and unscrew that and then we'll remove the star washer from the inside. This will be important to keep the switch in place on the dashboard. If you look close at the location there, you'll see there's a flat spot at the top of the hole on the dash. And it's going to coincide with the flat spot that's machined into the actual switch itself as shown here. So make sure that flat spot goes towards the top before you assemble and install the final components. Next, we'll reinstall the star washer, and the star washer does not ground the switch to the dashboard. It's just to make sure that the switch stays in place. Then we'll install the machine piece with the threads, and we'll screw that back on. Now, this is a hard part to tighten because you'll want to put a wrench on there, and you don't want to scratch the finish of your nice painted dash. So I've got this pair of pliers that I'm really kind of impartial to that have an adjustable, it's like an adjustable slip joint pair of crescent wrenches, and that'll fit those exactly right and they stand a very low chance of stripping off there and ha causing me any damage to my dashboard. And we'll go ahead and we'll tighten that nut up as tight as we can get it. Again, you don't want this switch falling out or moving around. Next, we'll reinstall the cap and make sure that the lock washer and the bolt are on the bottom side. As you push this on here, you'll have to push that button that's on the side to get it past the lip that's on that machine piece. Make sure your cap is horizontal there and then go ahead and tighten the bolt on the bottom to lock it in place. Again, I'm going to use my specialty pliers here to go ahead and give that the final tightening and make sure everything is secure. Lastly, we'll install the knob. Make sure your set screw is loose and then go ahead and take the knob and thread it back onto the switch. You'll spin this around a few times. The 
goal here is we're going to try to get the actual writing there that says lights to be horizontal. And just as I get this tight without pulling that switch out, it's almost perfect there. So this is a pretty good switch. Lastly, go ahead and tighten up the set screw with a flat bladed screwdriver. The switch itself performs multiple functions, and I'll show you those in a future video. For the time being now, I'm just going to make sure that it turns on and off and functions correctly. So I'll go ahead and just pull it out one position, push the button here, and then pull it out the second, and then re-push it back in. We're all set. Now that the switch is installed, I'm going to go ahead on the outside of the firewall here and pull the slack out that enabled me to work on the switch underneath the dash comfortably. This wire is going to have to go all the way to the tail end of the Jeep and also be connected some places in the front. There's also going to be some other things that have to be added to the switch, but we can do that with the tub on the chassis, which that is my main goal. So I'm just trying to get everything I need in place to make it easy, and then I can do the rest of it once the tub is installed on the chassis. Okay, so, so that's in. Now we've got that major part in now. We're going to start doing the little other switches and the wires that go under the dash also. Also, I have installed, or we have, that was fun, right? Put the tub on? Pain in the ass what it was. <laughs> Oh, geez, Scotty, why don't you just tell them how you really did it? <laughs> anyway, we installed the tub, and have, we've got a lot of questions every now and again. You know, hey, that's great how you're doing that, but how do I do it with this my chassis installed and with the fenders installed? Well, I'm trying to keep everybody happy with these, so I did the hard parts that I would call essential before we put the tub in, and you're not going to get those very easily if you, if you do have the tub in, and I could probably show you later in the video how you could do that if you needed to. And we also put the fuel line in there. Uh, those are very difficult parts at all right, so part four will be coming out soon. Thank you so much for following. And if you'd like to subscribe, how do you do that? Click the button. You're not going to start flashing light again, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. Until next time, keep it safe. And? You don't even know. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Happy, happy Jeeping. <laughs> happy keep it safe and happy Jeeping. <laughs>